if we don't take the onus upon ourselves to cr- set our own narrative and to tell our own story, what we are to the rest of the world is a blank canvas. And what do you do with a blank canvas? You show your own fears, you project your own fears, your own insecurities, your own opinions on that blank canvas. And that's what's happening. Number one, establish what your country's national interest is and pursue that and ignore all else at a state level. Number two, recognize foreign media coverage for what it is, sophisticated psyops, it's state propaganda that is deployed in order to further their country's geopolitical and business interests abroad. The third is to learn how to play that game. If this is the new form of hybrid warfare, if this is the new form of propaganda, then deploy global presence of your narrative. You've established your national self-interest, you've established what values you want to portray to the world, you've established uh, that Western or foreign uh, coverage is discredited. Now you have to fill that vacuum. So you need to take Doordarshan International. You have to promote entrepreneurs. You have to encourage Indian uh, newspapers, Indian TV channels to dream big and go head to head against uh, these players. And there's plenty of examples of how you do that. So there's RT, there's TRT, Al Jazeera, NHK. And it's not going to be a profitable venture at first, but that is one of the prices of running a mature country with well-defined goals and which understands its place in geopolitics and how to defend it and advance its its interests. If I were to create this hypothetical scenario, so let's say we do none of that. And uh, at the next elections, Rahul Gandhi becomes prime minister. <laughs> I can assure you, nothing will change in Western coverage of India. No matter how suave he is, no matter how good his English is, India will still be seen as caste, cows, curry, rape, pollution, because fundamentally, the rise of India, you know, be it through poverty alleviation, so socioeconomically or geopolitically, wanting a place at the UN Security Council, uh, wanting a multipolar world, are just so fundamentally opposed to the established interests of the current hegemons, the current dominant countries, that there's nothing we can do to change that. They exist to maintain the status quo and nothing short of a major, major disruption, like another world war or complete economic meltdown of one of the superpowers will cause a change. Take the first step to decolonize your mind because something that we don't realize is that we have a certain set of biases that are ingrained into us by society, by the state, by the education system in India, which have never been challenged since uh, colonial times. So we're still taught to believe that, oh, Western society, Western countries, they're rich and powerful today because there's something special about them. They did all the right things. They believed the right ideologies. They believed the right religions. And there's this rich like us phenomenon, which is post-colonial thing, where then they come back calling themselves the World Bank, calling themselves the IMF, or calling themselves the Western media and NGOs uh, and human rights organizations. And they'll say, oh, if only you did this like us, if only you did that like us, one day you can be rich like us. That's a lie. And And you have to open your eyes and see there is no perfect country. Every country has its flaws. And if certain countries are rich and powerful today, it's not because God rewarded them for their great values or their superior ideology or their superior race, even though this is what they like to claim themselves and try to tell us. It's because they got rich by pursuing their self-interest above all else. And that included war, that included apartheid, it included slavery, it included colonialism, it included imperialism. And that's how they got rich. Understand how they did that and challenge it. We can't undo what was done, but you can at least stop the further colonization of your mind, of your country, of your society, of your economy, if you open your eyes to this step. That colonialism never ended, it's taken new forms, and it's quite successful. These are the realities of the world we live in. And the sooner you see it for what it is, the sooner you can do something about it.